Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 10th video of our newly created technical series, ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, we have understood the concept of accessing server data from client. And we have also learned what are the different ways you can access server data. And also we have discussed one of the way, which was the G underscore scratchpad. And we have seen how powerful G underscore scratchpad is. And also I've given you demo or like practical two use cases where I've shown you how you can use the underscore scratchpad with the help of display business rule and how it works. That video was very, very informative. And if you missed that video, I would suggest you go and watch it right now. The link will be there in the description. And also you can find the link here on your screen, right? So let's see what we are going to learn from today's video. All right, so in the last video, we have seen about G underscore scratchpad. That's one of the uh, way to access the server data from client, like I said. So in today's video, we are going to see another way to access server data from the client. So that is the get reference. So yes, you are correct. That same method get reference that I have talked about while explaining the glide form, because this is coming from the glide form API that is used for the client end, right? Uh, but this is the only one dot get reference uh, by which we can directly access the reference field value um, through the client, right? And that's what we are going to do. Okay, and we will see what are the different ways you can use it and what are the drawbacks of it. And, you know, with use case, I will show you how practically you can implement it in ServiceNow PDI, right? So again, was the full video to clear your concept and definitely always let me know in the comment if you have any trouble, right? So there are two ways you can declare get reference. So the first one is the synchronous way. Uh, don't worry, we're going to discuss what is synchronous and asynchronous stuff. So first one is the synchronous where you can see get reference is only accepting one parameter that is a field name. And then we will see how this synchronous method works actually to give you an idea, right? And this is very, very important concept, synchronous, asynchronous. Uh, next, we have the get reference the other way. We can declare get reference with two parameters. One is the field name. Second one is the callback function. It is a recommended one from ServiceNow, not the first one. So this is the asynchronous way. And we will see how asynchronous method works. Finally, I will do a use case so that you can understand uh, how it is actually working, right? So let's start the class. Okay, so get reference with field name. So first, get reference is one of the method from the glide from API. So we can directly declare it like g underscore from dot get reference and then the field name, right? And uh, you know, we have a few reference field if I talk about the incident table. So we have few reference field there like the assignment group assigned to the caller field, right? These are the reference field which stores the CSID of the record which is coming from the other table, right? I hope this concept is clear for everyone. So it helps to get the entire record of a reference field. So what do I mean by that? So for an example, like caller ID is a reference field, right? So if we type g underscore from dot get reference caller ID, then it gets the whole record of that particular user, which is selected in the caller. So suppose in the caller, it is selected Abel tutor. So with the help of this line, get reference caller ID, it will take all the values like the first name, last name, email, company, and what are the things available? So it gets the whole record, entire record. Okay, so more about it, I'll tell you in later slide. And also remember, this is the reason of its drawback also. So it works synchronously. So again, I'll just tell you what synchronous and asynchronous uh, in a minute. And it causes processing halts while waiting for server response. For this fourth point, uh, actually ServiceNow doesn't recommend that and I should not use get reference. Then why we are learning? We are learning why we should not use it. That is also very, very important. You need to know. And also, what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? It is very, very important. So why there is a requirement to add a callback function? That we will understand. And you should avoid using this method without callback function, like I said. Now, how synchronous method works? Okay, so I have a box you can see where I will write down a example of the code. So you can see there is a variable where user email. And uh, here, what I'm doing is that gnscode.form dot get reference caller id dot email so what it will do it will store the email id of the caller callers okay we were mentioned in the caller field and then it's stored in the user email so then we can print it g underscore form dot add info add info message if you want to show it in the form or if you want to set value for a particular field we can do that right now what's wrong with it now when you execute this line two steps happen first step is that it looks for the reference record in the database so first 
g underscore form dot get reference caller id first this part works only this part up to caller id and it looks for that record in the database that is from the user table so suppose it is mentioned able tutor so now this method tries to look for the record of the able tutor and in that time the script and the processing actually halts until it finishes this step one looking for the information for the caller able tutor and why is that because it's the synchronous way and the meaning of synchronous is that when it works step by step so until unless step one is done you cannot do step two step two won't work okay that's how synchronous works and for that reason the script and the processing on the browser waits for the response for the step one to get the information about able tutor or the caller okay once it is done then after completing step one it requests server again for the email id of the caller once it gets the record then it asks for the email id because in the single line you are doing two things so you are trying to get the record like uh, whichever mentioned in the caller records of the caller like uh, from the user table right and also you are trying to store the email you want to get the email only because you know get reference returns the whole record now you are trying to get for the email part and then you are storing in the user email so that two thing is happening and that is why it is not recommended to use the synchronous method right now we have the another get reference where we are accepting two parameters which is the field name and second one is the callback function now what is the callback function and everything i'll just tell you in a minute so it is the same method but using two parameters uh, it is an asynchronous process you will understand what is asynchronous and how it works in the next slide and callback function executes when the server returns the reference value so what is this all line about so let's understand that with the same example and just to tell you that it is highly recommended uh, to use a callback function from service now okay so how the asynchronous method works so i'll show you with the same example so you can see g underscore from dot get reference here we have the caller id and get email this is the name of the callback function and then we declare the callback function using one argument user email so the result of got get reference actually stores to the first argument of the uh, callback function so in the user email it stores the whole record of the caller id right and then we just add info message user email dot email so user email is storing the uh, return value and so i'm just executing the email field that's it so now it is the asynchronous so you can see as callback function is present the process and the browser works normally without halts because because at first it is doing the step one only it is not directly accessing the email from here that we did from the uh, get reference previously right i have shown you first it is searching for the record and other works normally right so when it returns the record at that point this function get email comes in and then and it takes the result in the user email this first argument and then i'm accessing any of the fields so for here it is the email that's it so once the server returns the reference value the callback function starts working and there is no need for halt that's why it is important that you should use a callback function all right so it's time for the use case so in the incident form add a new field which is the email and when the caller changes the email should also get changed okay so let's see how to do that i hope you are ready with your pdi so let's implement that okay so i am in my pdi so i will go to the incident form uh, so actually incident.list so i'll open an existing incident so here we need to have the email field so whenever we will change the caller field automatically the value will come to the email field i mean the email id of the user will come to the email field so i'll go to the uh, form layout I'll quickly create a new field. So it will be name as email. That's it. I'm going to add it and I'm going to make it on the just just below caller. That's it. I'm going to click on save. All right. So when I'm going to change the caller uh, from any caller, so the email ID of the caller should be visible. OK, so that's the work. So I will go to the client script. And again, the same information like uh, once you're done with the uh, practice of old client script, so make sure you uh, make the active as false. Okay, that's a good habit. So your browser should not get slow. I'll create a new client script and here I'm getting the email. So I will name it as get email ID maybe. Uh, then the table name, you know, it should be incident. Here we go and it should be on change because we are changing the caller and then only it is going to trigger the client script okay so g underscore from dot get reference so we already understood how it uh, has to be declared right so here i need to give the caller id that's the reference field and here i will name the 
callback function simply get email okay that's it so in the first step it will search for the uh, record for the caller id so if the caller id is able tutor so it will search for the record of the able tutor in the user table okay and now here i'm going to declare the function so function get email so that's the callback function and i'm going to get the and the argument i'll give it as name like email just email so once the server returns the record for the caller id able tutor or any of the caller whichever it's selected then i'm starting the callback function and the record gets stored in the first argument so that i can directly do like this t underscore form dot set value and uh, the field name will be uh, i think u underscore email yeah that's the custom field so u underscore email then here simply i'm gonna set the value as as so email where i have the record the full record of the user table and i'm going to access the email actually so maybe let's change the name uh, email user and so that you know you can understand email user dot i'm accessing the email uh, field so i'll save it and it should work you can see it's pretty simple okay so i will refresh it i will change from able tutor to maybe this user and you can see the email id is pop up so i'll change to other user it is changing so you can see it is dynamically working right so whenever i'm changing the caller field the email field is automatically changing so this is th this is the thing which you cannot do with the help of g underscore scratchpad because business rule never works dynamically so here it's a benefit of using get reference but remember with callback we should use but there is a thing but service now always recommend to use the uh, glide ajax method in the client side to access the server value why let me tell you because whenever i write this line that is the gn score from dot get reference caller id get email when i write this line it is fine that the processing halt is not there because i'm using a callback function directly i'm not accessing uh, dot email like this which i've shown you in my ppt uh, that was uh, without callback function that's fine process is not halt but however whenever i am asking for the caller id so this method actually getting the whole record i told you right all the fields value of the caller so maybe it's able tutor so all the field value like first name last name email uh, manager department each and everything it's getting stored under the get reference right and then it is passing to the email user that's why i'm directly access uh, able to access the email so i can also able to access any other field like department first name last name anything so the whole record gets stored in get email which is not necessary we are only looking for the email so only the email field should returns so that's the thing that's where there is a chance of delay while dealing with the whole record that's why you should not use it that's why you should use the glide ajax where you can only get the thing which you are looking for so also remember with the help of get reference we can only get access to the field of the reference table if you want to see some other information from some other table not which is containing under the reference table like from the user table then we won't be able to do that so for the smooth work and complex work also you should use glide ajax but to do glide ajax like g underscore scratchpad works with the display business rule so glide ajax works with script include so script include is another place where we can use you know uh, the server side scripting and also make it available uh, for the client okay and we will understand that how script include works how glide ajax works make sure you're ready with that but i hope the concept of get reference is pretty much clear to all of you make sure to practice more and more so that we can get uh, more idea about it some more use cases of get reference and also uh, g underscore scratchpad i will upload it for the members so don't forget to join my channel and become a member with a minimum level of subscription right so if you like the video hit the like button if you have any comment then ask me in the comment section and don't forget to share with this video with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people also don't forget to subscribe my channel and join my insta channel to get tech updates and the tech reels bye bye see you in my next video